You don't have to have a glowing arm. You don't have to have no, a glowing arm. As cool as that Not would be. Not this time. You don't have to have a bell that flies to you every time you call it. You, you know, you don't, you have, don't to, have to live in a cave. You don't have to live in a cave. That would also be kind of cool. Hey, I'm Jordan Burke. And I'm Kristen Briola. This is Saints and Sages. Where we talk about the wisdom of the saints and how it's relevant for you. It's 2021. 2021. And we are starting on a whole new batch of saints and sages. And Drop the really mic. really excited. And today, we're going to talk about an Irish saint. It seems that for a while there, it was French, it was Spanish, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was a, a few Italians Where are we going? There. Where are we going? Now we're going to Ireland. We're going all the way to the Green Isles. Mm. Is that Ireland? Did I just make that up? I don't Gaelic, know. Gaelic, Celtic, yeah. all that good Jack Septicai, yeah. You don't know who that is. Don't no, worry about it's it. it's okay. We're going to the Ireland. <laughs> so St. Philin is our man today. We are going to talk about him because he is an incredible human who walked this earth as a monk. He did. Well, yeah, he walked this earth as a few things, but let's preface this really quickly. Back it up. So I'm actually really glad that the last episode that we did was St. Lucy because St. Lucy was a really good example of someone whose history is passed down mostly through... Um, just verbal tradition, oral tradition, right? And we didn't have a ton of like actual historical paperwork like we did with like St. Joan of Arc or St. Gemma or, you know, all, all these other saints that we've talked about. Maggie's giving me a look because anytime I can mention St. Gemma, I'm going to mention St. <laughs> Gemma, all right? But everybody who listens knows this by now. So, uh, but St. Lucy, as we mentioned in the last episode, is is said every day in the mass. So, it it was it was a really good example to show that even just on oral tradition alone, the level of importance of the saint is 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 astronomical. Why am I saying that? This is another saint that is based a lot on oral tradition. It was actually this was one of the harder ones for me to research because there really wasn't a lot to to go over and find. But so that's why we wanted to preface this. Did was does, am I saying things that make sense? Is this making sense? Yes, okay. he was time okay he's a timeless man yeah and that's just through the faith that people have in his story and the tradition of our awesome catholic church and he has some awesome legends uh, we'll call them legends or stories i don't really know the appropriate title for them that are associated to him kind of similar you you wrote this in your notes similar to saint anthony which i mm-hmm. thought was, a, was was a good kind of connection to make um go back and listen to that episode as well but Born in Ireland. 695. 695. Around he, late 7th century. He was the son of a prince and a princess. I wasn't going to attempt to give the name, but you go ahead. You Fariac and St. Kentigerna. 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 <laughs> we apologize um, for, to Irish listeners for our, our horrific accents, but it's a fun yeah, name to say. Honestly, though, he moved a lot as a kid. Okay. And I don't know about you guys, but um, if I, I'm certain some of, some of you, words are hard have moved a lot and can relate to him because he moved with his mom, his brothers, and his uncle, um, Locke Duik, and he moved again as a young adult. He just moved a lot. So yeah. he's actually born in Ireland, but he was a missionary in Scotland. Well, and he became, he entered the monastery at a really young age. So he started this faith journey. As, by the way, many sa- saints have. You know, we have so many stories that we've told where these saints are are so young when they begin this journey. He's He's one of those as well. But something I found that was really interesting, and this comes into play later, but, uh, well, first of all, his name, they believe that it comes from Old Gaelic, which means uh, Little Wolf, which I thought was really neat. Mm -hmm. There's a story that comes into play there. And then I had read that uh, he, his arm glowed. And, Whoa, you just like jumped yeah. two pages ahead. Yeah, to it, so but yeah okay, I'm, we'll go I'm there. I'm throwing this out here, so, because this comes, <laughs> Casual, this is going to come into right, play y'all? later. Basically, the story goes is that he was in a monastery monastery that didn't allow them to use candles at night, but he wanted to continue reading and writing scripture. And because of his love for reading and writing scripture and learning and and really diving into the faith and be, you know becoming that servant of God that he wanted to be, he was given the ability. I guess I don't know if he can control it, but I guess his arm glowed. That's basically all we have. Um, and you'll realize why we brought that up because it comes into play later. His arm, but. That's the story of the glowing arm. Well, and legend has it that it was his left arm because he was writing. So he was getting a little frustrated. I mean, he didn't have power 
there was no electricity, no source of energy. Hello, we're at 695. And so candles were really the only option. And being in a cave as a monk, he needed light. So he was like, Lord, I really need light. And his arm began to glow. So that's just a little mini miracle. A really handy miracle. And honestly, if that, if I could like have a pick of miracles, that may be a top, like top three, (laughs) just to have light whenever I needed it. So that's just me. Now, he is a missionary, as you said. He later becomes an abbot. And at one point, he's building a church. This is kind of, you know, you, Chris, and correct me if I'm skipping ahead. The The timeline was kind of hard to follow. But there's a certain as- there's a certain time and th- where he was building a church. And he had an ox that was killed by a wolf. And it basically was said that he convinced the wolf of his wrongdoing. And the wolf took the place of the ox. And that's kind of what we had mentioned before with the St. Anthony story. But I, I love that little legend there. Uh, yes, because he was really fulfilling his duty as a missionary yeah. um, with the Pikes, the Gaelic Celtic people. I think it's Celtic people of originally Roman times. And then um, just sh- sharing his faith as a missionary, as a Christian. And between carrying the building materials to build this church, you know, the ox was murdered by the fox. and The then- wolf. I mean, the wolf. Yeah. yeah fox, that makes it good. Rhyme, wolf, though. Yeah. I like what you which, did there. Whichever, you know, whatever you feel. No, I'm just kidding. It's a wolf. Um, he totally actually began picking up materials, supposedly, because St. Anthony, I mean, St. Philin was like, dude. Yeah. I have to you build took this my church. Ox. <laughs> I have to build this church. You're either going to. This you know, is my mission for yeah. the Lord. Yeah. I mean, I have no idea what he actually said, but I could just imagine him being like, really? And so the wolf took on all the building materials and began to assist him. So that's the story. Story goes like this. Um, And so also legend has it, word got out that there was a pool near the church, Mm -hmm. which was used as a shrine to remember the saint. So later on after he passed away um, for many years following. And similar to what I just was thinking about St. Anthony as well, because that fish moment, I don't know if y'all listened to our St. Anthony episode, go back if you haven't, yeah. but there was a miracle when he was presenting the gospel to the people, they weren't listening. So he turned around to the river and was like, Hey fish. Hey fish. Yeah. And, and preached to the fish. Repent. And they actually lifted out of the water miraculously and bowed at St. Anthony out of gratitude for That's his saying. preaching. So like similar to um, St. Anthony and, of course, St. Francis. We love him. He loves the animals. Um, it seems St. Philan had a relationship with animals and really shared with him what he desired. Well, and you, so you brought up the pool. The pool is also very important. So yes. it was a part of the shrine. And this is, this is again, we're just going through the legends. And, and just to preface one, for one more time, uh, there isn't a ton of information on this saint. We're, so we're giving you exactly what we have. So if it seems like we're kind of jumping around, if it seems like we may be missing something, it's just because we're fact, piecing it together. We're, we've pieced this together the best we can. I mean, we pulled from um, the official Scottish website. We pulled from, you know, BBC. We pulled from historical museums that actually have some of his 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 Relics. staff, which is beautiful. Mm-hmm. If you get a chance to look it up, that sort of thing. So that's why this seems a little bit more scattered than I think some of our <laughs> other ep- episodes. It's just the nature of going over the saints. We're going to have every, one of these every once in a while, but. Luckily for you, we've done the work, so you just have to listen, and you're gonna have you're gonna have all the information compiled for you here. But so for the pool, uh, he is the patron saint of mental illness mm. and an affliction, an affliction. And so this he had this like healing pool that was there was a pool in his cave, which we'll get to, and then there was this pool by his shrine and by the church by the church later became the shrine. Correct. And one of the things that they did was they would take people in some who were mentally ill, suffering mental illness of whatever kind. This was after like. he passed away, by the way. Yes, yes, thank you. And they'd submerge them in the pool, and then they'd bind them and wait and wait. They'd bind them and leave them on. I thought I thought I read it was like uh, a stone, um, like an outside pew, a bench. That's Something what those like are that. Called, Just a right? bench, yeah. you know, wood <laughs> together bench. Yeah. And so, <laughs> if they came back in the person. Uh, the bindings had fallen, then they were recognized as, you know, you're cured. And that's how the story goes. Uh, so that was kind of interesting. And they attributed a lot of that healing to St. Philip. Yeah. All because of it, that's actually. where he prayed and where he wrote and spoke to God and yes. really had an, a divine relationship with the Lord. Yeah. 
And so the, the village, the fi fish village was adamant about sharing that St. Phil and really it's through his intercession that these people were receiving healing. And later on, that fishing village was named after him. So. Yes. And in, oddly enough, it was said that um, in. So the the cave is called Pitten Weem. I don't know if I got that right, but Pitten Weem, the cave that where his arm glowed is actually still a location that you can go to because really it is said neat. after he died, his legacy in Scotland remained even outside of Christianity because his staff and bell were taken by the abbot, which was like the kind of the bishop of the the monks, um, of the abbot of Inchifrey to a battle. And in that battle, the battle of Bannockbum, the Scots <laughs> were you wanna, yeah, I'm watching, run I'm that by me again so, one more time? <laughs> No, I'm not saying that again. Um, the Scots <laughs> used his relics and they won the battle. So there's two and stories. So, yeah, so yeah, there's, there's that couple story. Stories. And the second story is that they wanted to bring the relic into battle and someone was protecting it and said, you can't bring it into battle. The arm ended up falling out of the um, <laughs> container that it was held in on its own. And they attribute, and, and that same day the battle was won and they made the connection. The bell, by the way, is another relic of his. This is another one of the legends where when he was praying over somebody, he would call to the bell and wherever the bell was, it would fly to him, which is really kind of interesting. So either way, the town and the people yeah. really attribute the miracle of them winning the victory to his spiritual aid yep. and yep. through his intercession, the win. Yep. And you can go and we both had actually found a video. Someone did a walkthrough of the cave on YouTube. It's really yes. neat if you search for St. Philan. And um, it's really just kind of this fat. I'm always fascinated by this stuff. I'd love to go there someday. But there's even a second level somehow. Like they have it blocked off so you don't go up there. But there's stairs carved into the side of this cave to go to a second level. It's just a really fascinating kind of story, scenario. And again, this is one where we don't have a ton of like actual, you know, paper information. This is all passed down from oral tradition. But it's it's still interesting. It's still you know it, it's still a saint recognized by the Catholic Church on the calendar, right? So there's some merit here, you know, to to everything we're everything we're talking about. Um, but yeah, I, I'm just I don't know. This was a this was a tough one, but it was an interesting one. And also, it's through the attribution of all those people who were physically healed, because there are many documents for centuries of people who were mentally ill or afflicted went to those pools or ponds mm. near his um, cave and were healed and those bonds were loosened. And so that attribution really has just withstood history and time. And the people who are mentally afflicted and go there and who have experienced that healing you know, really attribute a lot of his prayers to that. So there's a lot of hope in his story. And I think just the fact that he really gave himself to the Lord in all things and devoted, I mean, in the entirety of his life through prayer and meditation and writing as a monk and then being a missionary in a different uh, country with his family, um, he devoted a lot of his time and efforts to serving the Lord in ways that are not normal yeah um and i think just kind of our i don't know tying it into our modern day topic and then also catholic authentic spirituality it's really easy to not actually live out the call that god asks of us yeah. the mission the purpose that he has for us when the world screams at us to hide and run and live just kind of a facade fake life and that that's okay we can pretend like just keep pretending fit into the mold that people make for us and live in the dark and don't actually reveal your true self to people like don't be authentic it's okay be in the dark that's what the world screams at us yeah but really we are called as christians as faithful catholics to live out our life with light and love truth joy on who we actually are and to be honest about where we've come from and that is like true gospel message right yeah. it's like being who god has made us to be and being honest about where we've come from and then the beauty of transformation that the lord has in store for us and that's how we can go make disciples you, you know don't, you don't have to have a glowing arm you don't have to have no, a glowing arm as cool as that not would be. this time <laughs> you don't have to have a bell that flies to you every time you call it you, you know you don't, you have, don't to, have to live in a cave you don't have to live in a cave that would also be kind of cool 
<laughs> you just have to be authentic. You just have to be who God has called you to be. And look, I mean, I'm glad that I'll just I'll say it. I'm glad you found something to tie to a modern topic because I was reading through this and I was like, I don't where know where we going with this. Gonna... <laughs> like, have faith that these miracles occurred. Uh... <laughs> yeah. But regardless, as I said, this is still church history, no matter what you know. And and it's good to take time to set aside to learn these things, even if it doesn't come up again. Even but you know. I, I just, I don't know. I don't. I don't really have anything else to say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess just to wrap it up, though, um, he is a witness to really living out his faith. And as Catholic Christians in a world that it's pretty difficult to be honest about where we actually are in our life, I just encourage you to go before our Lord and really meditate on like, Lord, where do you have me in this world? And where am I not being honest with myself and with others? And how can I be more like you mm. in all things? And it's pretty simple, right? God is not a complicated God. Us humans overcomplicate things all the time. It's really simple. We can be simple like Saint Philan and pray and fast and be a missionary for other people um, and really live out our our lives authentically. We don't have to pretend. I, I, I don't know. There's been seasons of my life where it feels like I have to be someone else mm. or I'm reaching out like, oh, if I were just like them or if I could be, you know, like someone else, maybe I could just be a better person or maybe that's where I'm supposed to be. Maybe that's what other people want of me, my reputation, you know, whatever it is. Um, I've struggled with that in the past, but the Lord is like, no, I have placed you through certain circumstances like this man, St. Philan, who was born in Ireland, lived in Scotland and was a missionary to people who probably didn't actually want to become Christians. Maybe some of them did. I'm, I'm sure they did just through all of his travel and story, but he really lived it out and he wasn't afraid to do that. And so anyway, just continuing to walk on this journey without fear and knowing that your story is important. And what you've been through is good. It's true. It's beautiful. What's happened to you is real. And we can share that with the world authentically. Yeah. You don't have to pretend. Yeah. So that's just my thought. Like that's it. what I received I like from it. this. You definitely carried this episode because I was... No, I was at, <laughs> glory to God. <laughs> <laughs> I was at a little bit of a loss with this one. So, no, I think that's great. And I think that's something, again, that people need to meditate on. And and uh, until the next episode, I guess. Bye. Same, yeah, same feeling. <laughs> Pray for us. Pray for us. Bye. Bye.